Hey boys and girls, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. In lieu of my Tuesday fishing report, since I've not been on the water, I'll get on the water tomorrow. It's Monday night. I'm gonna save you 200 bucks from not making a mistake like I did. So that is a Helix 12 down imaging transducer that mounts externally on my uh, on my Ultrax trailer motor. So I have Gen 2 Helix units. The Gen 3s are an internal HD, and I want to get one. I just haven't gotten one yet. But I'd have to buy a new trolling motor and new units. But I want down imaging on the front, so I need one of these. The problem is, I got one of those. <laughs> so there's three significant pinch points on these trolling motors that'll cause you to need a new one. And I'm going to show you what those are. I'm going to show you how to install your transducer. I'm going to show you one other little piece that I have on my trolling motor that has saved me some trolling motor, uh, has tra saved me some transducers. And I'm going to just show you basically how to do this install. So stick around. Here we go. Okay, I started this video one hour ago. It's taken me that long to get this stupid patching. The guys who make this passing, packaging ought to be horse whipped. You've got to cut it open. But here's what's inside of it. A transducer, uh, two, uh, two hose clamps, and three zip ties. Now, that's funny because I'm going to tell you something in a minute that I don't know if it's true or not, but what I've been told about uh, using uh, zip ties doing this. So here we go. Okay, so let's fit the transducer on first. Now, some of the transducers are not directional, meaning that there's not a front and a back. These are directional, and this is one of those things where I wonder if maybe the engineer is not a fisherman. The cable actually comes out the slot on the front, okay? So that cable comes out the direction the troller motor is facing. Now let me show you what I've got on my motor that helps protect this thing a little bit. It is, it's a piece made by Transducer Savers, folks. I'll put a link to them down below. But it's this piece right here, and it's just sort of a ram, if you will, that that transducer, I'll show you when it's mounted. It's going to sit up inside of that. I'm going to loosen this a little bit, fit that transducer, put the, uh, uh, tighten it down on there and then tighten that down in front of it. Now in Texas, we don't have Well, at least in deep East Texas, we don't have a lot of rocks We're not fishing around a lot of stuff that'll tear a transducer off a trolling motor But I do fish, you know, Texoma. I get over in Central Texas. I get into Arkansas and Oklahoma So this piece it's a very inexpensive piece. I don't remember what I paid for it But versus another $200 transducer that's well worth the money So let me show you how to get it fitted on here real quick by the way, these hose clamps come with a, with a uh, you can do it with a common screwdriver, but it's a whole lot easier to do it with a 5 16th, ounce, 5 16th inch wrench, okay? So you're going to have to do it all, all the way undo it. Can you tell it's hot here in the boat barn this evening in the world headquarters? Now, just a fair warning from having done this once or twice, you want to make sure that it's pointing straight down. The easiest way to do that is to put it back flat again, walk around here, and just sort of match up the flat surfaces, right? So that one's not quite there. It needs to go down just a smidge. Probably not the best way to do it. But we'll loosen it up, and we'll back it down just another smidge. That's flat right there. Okay. So now I've got it mounted on there, you can see. You can see my cable comes out the front and now I'm gonna protect the front of that dude with that little ram right there. And again, it just sits right snug on top of it right there. And 
they make these for a bunch of different transducers. These are pretty solid because you've got that in there, but the ones that are the little cheapy plastic, that's well worth your investment because even the really inexpensive transducers for other units are still pretty doggone expensive. So now we've got our cable hanging off there. We've got to run it up our shaft, and this is going to be one of our main pinch points. I'm going to show you right here that you got to avoid in the one that cost me a new transducer. So one of the major, major pinch points on a trolling motor is this bracket right here. This bracket will accident absolutely pinch a cable, and here's the problem, and here's what got me, right? So if you look on the side of an Ultrex, there's this little channel that runs up the trolling motor shaft, and I thought, well, that's where you run your, uh, where you run your cable. And the guys at Toledo Fiberglass who know this stuff said, no, no, they said, that'll work on a couple of them. They said, but the HD cable is too thick, or the, uh, the down imaging cable is too thick, and if you run it in that channel, this is going to pinch it, and you're going to spend another $200 with it. So they want me to run that cable dead up the top. My trolling motor always sits the same direction. So we're going to run that cable dead up the top of the trolling motor. Now here's the funny point. Now I do not know if this is true or not. But Moon Pie took his trolling motor over to Michael Yoder in Texarkana, who is a big uh, Garmin, Lor excuse me, a big Lawrence guy. Maybe a Garmin guy too. Anyway, he said something to Moon Pie that got me spooked. He said that if uh, Humminbird, Garmin, or Lawrence see a where these cables have been pinched from zip tying them to your shaft, they'll, they'll void the warranty on that and they won't replace it. He said, always use electrical tape. Now, the guys at Toledo Fiberglass said, yeah, I've never heard that. But you know what? I'm not going to take a chance. I'm not going to use zip ties. I'm going to use electrical tape. It's also a way to keep it where it ain't going to move at all. So I'm going to electrical tape mine up, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so there you go. So I mounted it. You see I come up. I've electric taped it. I'm dead on top. So that's my first big pinch point where you break the trolling motor cable. The second one is right here where it gets hung up. Now, I've got the advantage. I've got the uh, the down imaging, or excuse me, the 360 imaging. So what I did is I simply routed it up to keep it completely out of that mechanism for when you fold the trolling motor down and just ran it up and wrapped it with my wires. Now that looks like crap, and I've seen now that uh, those TH Marine sleeves, so I ordered one of those off Tackle Warehouse. I'll show you that as soon as I get in. It's, a, it's about 40 bucks, but it's just cool looking. So... Then I ran it all the way up here. You see now I, had, I didn't have room to go in here, so I just pushed it in and pulled it right back out right there. It's a mess right now, but once I get that cable wrap on there, it'll look a lot better. Now, one other thing to note here. So I run a 12 up front, which is my 360 imaging, my down imaging, and my, uh, it, well, that's what it's, 360 imaging and down imaging. And then I run a 10 that is simply, it's the most inexpensive 10 you can get, and that's purely my mapping unit. And so what I do on these, because I take them out on occasion, you see I've written on that one 12, and I've written on that one 10, and that way I don't get them backwards. They'll work if they're backwards, but if I put them on backwards, if I put the wrong uh, connection into the wrong unit, then I have my 360 on my little unit, and my down is my little unit, and I want it on my big unit. So there you go. Uh, that was my project for the night. But if you'll avoid those two major pinch points right there, right there and of course obviously down here protecting your transducer uh, there's a lot better chance you're not going to have to do what i just did which was go spend an extra 200 dollars to buy a new one and yes i know the boat barn is a complete mess so i'm gonna get out tomorrow in the heat and do a little little bit of fishing it's gonna be hot it's uh it's uh 10 after 9 here on july the 13th and it's 94 degrees in the boat barn so it's going to be a hot one, but we're going to go out early tomorrow and try to catch a few fish and see what's going on in Raven and get you guys a Raven report up, which hopefully I'll get up for you on Wednesday. So that's how to install an external transducer and avoid your pinch points. Thanks to the guys at um, Toledo Fiberglass for helping me with that. And I would be real curious in the comments, if you guys have heard anything about wire cables or, or uh, um, uh, zip ties, voiding warranties on transducers or other stuff electronic-wise, I'd love to hear about it in the comments, so add below if you hear that, because uh, again, Michael told Steve that was the case. So I'm electric taped up. I should be legal other than the old stuff that was already on their zip ties. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll get some more video up for you guys in the next 36, 48 hours. Thanks, guys.